Theater presents... Welcome to my mansion of mystery. Big houses are such an expense these days, what with rising costs and higher taxes. Big, lovely old homes are a problem to keep up. It's a pity, too. We're about to visit one such lovely home, known for 160 years as the Logan Place, currently inhabited by Mrs. Stell Logan and her sister Cora, the last of the Logan line. At the moment... Mrs. Stell Logan finds herself in a difficult position. There's nothing you can do, Miss Logan. You need $10,000, which you do not have and cannot borrow. What I can do for you is see that your interests are protected. My interests lie entirely in this house. That's what I want to protect. Well, you have my sympathy, but things have gone too far. I'll believe that, Mr. Henley, when the sheriff puts me bodily onto the street. Our mystery drama, The Cantankerous Ghost, was written especially for Radio Mystery Theater by Bob Joran and stars Marion Seldes. I'll return shortly with Act One. As I said earlier, large Victorian houses are such an expense these days. No one knows that better than Estelle Logan. Now in her 70s, she is the last of the proud Logan family rattling around in the 160-year-old homestead with her sister, Cora. She has tried to keep up appearances, but it daily becomes a losing battle. The cold, hard fact is being presented to her at the moment by an attorney she's engaged to help her. I'm afraid you have no choice, Miss Logan. The taxes are too far in arrears. You can't get another mortgage on the place. Then I have to lose the house? I wish there was something I could do. If I had the money, I'd lend it to you myself. But things will only get worse. Borrowing now only puts off the inevitable. I promised my father on his deathbed I'd keep this house until my last breath. Circumstances make some promises impossible to keep. I did it all wrong. I've called for help too late. You realize some money from the sale of the house after the taxes have been satisfied? For you and your sister can get a small apartment. I've sold everything of any value to keep this house going. All my jewelry, antiques, <laughs> even most of the furniture, as you can see. Well, then surely you can see the futility of trying to go on. But I have survived. I will survive this crisis. I intend to stay right here. But I've already explained. I know what you've already told me, that the house will be sold for taxes. I was aware of that before I engaged you. I expected more for my money than something I already know. I thought you could do something to prevent it, to, to, to help me. You have my complete sympathy, Miss Logan. But things have gone too far. I will believe that, Mr. Henley. When the sheriff puts me bodily onto the sidewalk. What did the young man want, Estelle? I told you, Cora. He's the attorney I hired to try to save the house. He didn't want anything, except his fee, I suppose. Oh, Papa wouldn't like that. You know how Papa was about lawyers. He'd be furious if he knew you were hiring lawyers. We are going to lose the house. Lose the house? Well, that's impossible. It belongs to us. It's always belonged to us. My papa made sure we'd I always told have a... that lawyer I'd fight. But I don't know, Cora. I think he knows what he's talking about. Lose the house? I can't believe it. Is that why that strange man comes and looks at it all the time? What? strange man. Well, he's rather nice looking, well-dressed, and I'm sure well-bred. When did he come to look at the house? I saw him day before yesterday, and again this morning. Today he had a young woman with him. What did they do? Tell me. Oh, goodness, there's still no need to snap at me. I know you're upset. Please, but please, Cora, tell me about this man. The first time he walked up and down the sidewalk, looking. 
and making notes in a little book. From the bank? An appraiser. Oh, I knew it. And this morning, with the young woman, well, they walked around the backyard, nodding their heads, as though they approved. But why didn't you send them off? They got no right to trespass. This is still our home. Why didn't you chase them? Well, they weren't causing any harm, really. I didn't think it would upset you so much. Oh, everything's upsetting me at the moment, Cora. I'm sorry I was cross. Well, we have to face it, dear. We're in trouble. Well, you know more about it than I do, dear. But as for losing the house, oh, that's ridiculous. Papa would never allow it. There's nothing our dear Papa can do about it. I wish to heaven I knew what I could do. Would you like some more tea, dear? No, thank you, Cora. You should have eaten more than you did, Estelle. You've been looking a little peaked lately. Oh, Cora, please. Oh, I'll, I'll get it, Estelle. Now, you stay here. See who it is first. No one's come to the front door in years. What? It's that man again. The one I told you who was... Working. Let me get it, Cora. I'll send him packing before he knows what hit him. The nerve coming right to the door. Vulture! I beg your pardon, are you? Scavenger, get away from here. I know you've been sneaking around. My sister saw you. Now just go away and get out. This house is mine. It's always been mine. It always will be mine. So just forget about it. I gather you're the owner of the house. I am. And if you think you're going to get it for taxes, you're sadly mistaken. Now just leave and don't come back or I'll call the police. Hey, wait a minute, lady. You don't even know what I'm here for. Will you let me explain? I'm surprised you'd want to take advantage of us like this. So surprised, in fact, that... Yes. Yes, you can explain. I'd like to hear your explanation. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, can I come in? No, that's going too far. Okay, okay. Look, I'm interested in your house. It's just what I want. Lots of eaves and gables, tall windows, gloomy and run-down looking. Well, that's hardly a compliment. No, no, your house is perfect. Yes, well, it's not for sale. I, I don't want to buy it. You don't want to buy it? No. But then, what interests you? I thought you... No, it's the ideal house, and I've been looking at dozens of them the past few weeks. I, I want to rent it for a movie I'm directing. A, a horror movie. We'll pay you $2,500 a day. Uh, thank you for showing me around, Miss Logan. <laughs> oh, boy. The interiors are perfect. Well... Do sit down, Mr. Blake. Will you join us for tea? Yeah, I'll take a cup, thanks. Cora? Right away, dear. Now, Mr. Blake, you did say $2,500 a day? Mm-hmm. Uh, plus payment for any damage we might do. We're fully insured. Damages? What kind of damages? Now, Papa wouldn't like... No, 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 no nothing serious. But, well, in setting up our equipment, we might... Scar the floor, break a wall fixture, we'll cover the cost of all repairs. But when... Uh, when would you want to start? Uh, tomorrow, if that's all right with you. Tomorrow? I'll add a thousand dollar bonus for the inconvenience. And how many days do you think this is going to take? Well, I hope we can wrap it up in about ten days. But if we do go longer, I hope you'll be patient with us. Oh, Mr. Blake, I assure you, we'll be the very soul of patience. <laughs> We'll shoot the staircase scene first. Myra comes up the stairs, sees the light under the door. The door starts to open and she faints. Where is Myra? Uh, makeup. Uh, hey, Rudy, get Myra. We're ready to shoot. I want to get all the straight scenes out of the way first. When the special effects men get going, it's going to take some time. And at 2500 a day, I want to move as fast as we can. Ready when you are, Rex. Uh, you know the scene. It's uh, all pantomime. Mm -hmm. Up the stairs and faint when the door starts to open, right? Right. Uh, you ready up there on the second floor? Ready. Okay. Roll them, Eddie. I, I, I don't understand it, Rex. That white clouds there in the background and all the, uh, all the dailies. What about the stuff we shot yesterday afternoon? Same thing. Everything we shot is bad? Yeah, I can't figure it out. Now, I'm using the same equipment I used last week in the sailing scene. Camera's okay. Film's fresh. I, I checked everything. Oh, look at it there. It skips around right behind Myra. Look, 
Like the film was fogged in different spots. Yeah, yeah, that's the puzzle. If the film was fog, one whole side would be milky. Now, this thing flits around like a... like a ghost. Now, uh, check your equipment again. <sighs> now, we're back to square one with this stuff. Is something wrong, Mr. Blake? You look distressed. Uh, we have to reshoot everything we did for the past two days. Uh, equipment trouble. Oh, what a shame. Yeah, the film fog. In every scene, there was a... A white mist in the background. Oh, well, I don't know anything about these things. I'm so sorry you're having trouble. Yeah, the big trouble is finding out what's wrong. I have the best cameraman in the business on this picture. And it hasn't happened before? No, not like this. Uh, we're ready for the dining room scene, Rex. Uh, everything checked out? Yeah, yeah, I ran some tests this morning. Camera's perfect, film's fresh. Uh, I'm using the same stock now that I use for the tests. <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. Don't count on it. Well, I'd better get out of your way. Let you work. Okay, places, everybody. Look, uh, Eddie, I want a good effect as Myra lights the candles. I, I want to see the reflection of the flame in her eyes. Oh, you'll get it. You'll get it. And, okay, Myra, now take your time. Be very deliberate as you light each candle. And working close, will you, honey? Just the way you did yesterday. Now, I want you hovering over the candle lover. Right. Okay. Roll them. Action! Oh, darn. Sorry. The flame went out. Cut! Uh, hey, Rooney, check those doors. There's a draft in here. Okay. I didn't feel any breeze. The candle just won't light. Well, try it again. We won't roll. Uh, there it goes again. Now, try one of the other candles. Where the devil did they get those things? Here, here give me those matches. Uh, be my guest. Wasting time for a silly candle. Well, you're not doing any better than I was. Uh, they just go out. Uh, all right, uh, take a break, everyone, until we get new candles. Oh, Mr. Blake, I have some candles upstairs if you'd like to try them. They're brand new and they look just like the ones you're using. It would save us time. Thanks, Miss Logan. Okay, let's see if we can do better with these. Isn't that peculiar? There, there isn't any wind, and it just goes out. These candles are doing the same thing. Oh, this is ridiculous. Oh, we can't get a simple candle to light in this house. Look, Eddie, set up for the staircase scene again while we buy up every candle in town. Poor Mr. Blake. He's certainly having a hard time, Cora. I'll be awfully glad when these people leave. All the shouting and confusion... I can't get any rest at all. Neither can I. We'll drive the blackguards out. Esther, what? Who? Who said that? Look, look, Esther, in the rocking chair. A white mist. What? I'm, I'm going to say. A white mist, just like Mr. Blake described on his film. Whatever is plaguing Rex Blake's filming in the old Logan place seems to be making itself known in one form or another. Perhaps now we'll find out just what that white mist is and why the candles won't light. And also, what other ghostly things lie in store for the Logan mansion and the film Rex Blake is trying to make when I return shortly with Act Two. <laughs> Actual homes for a movie setting is common practice among filmmakers. There's no doubt the family life is disrupted for a time as technicians drag lighting cables all over the place and cameras loom in every corner. Estelle Logan welcomes it, however, because it means enough money to pay her back taxes. But it seems there's another resident of the house who objects. A white mist... Just like Mr. Blake described on his film. Now, just what's going on here? That's what I want to know. Exactly who or what are you? I am Clayton Logan, original owner and builder of this house, which of late seems to have turned into a circus. Clayton Logan? Great-grandfather's ghost? Yeah, the same. 
I have been slumbering peacefully for 110 years until that crowd of ninnies started tearing up the place. Now, what is going on? But, I, I, but, but you, you, you can't be here. And why not? I believe I've already informed you that I am the original owner and builder. I don't believe in ghosts, much less converse with them. Well, that, my dear, is your misfortune. I'm sorry I died before you were born. Now, tell me, what is all this nonsense in the house? Well, I rented the house to a film company to make a movie. I, I should think that would be obvious. Uh, well, what is a movie? Oh, it was you. The mist that turned up on the film. You're talking gibberish. And you kept the candles from lighting. Oh, yes, the candles. <laughs> I was merely curious and uh, leaned a little too close. It uh, gave me, needless to say, great satisfaction to watch that young man's discomfort when they kept going out. <laughs> the one with the beard. The director, Mr. Blake. Uh, we shall have no more of that around here. Now, you tell them to leave. They are paying me $2,500 a day to use this house. Abuse the house, you mean? <laughs> they pay for any damage, and besides, I need the money. What for? I'll lose the house for taxes if I don't get this money. No oh, nonsense. Lose the Logan place? Impossible. But you don't know what expenses are like these days. You've been dozing for uh, how many years? A hundred and ten. Well, then why haven't we seen or heard from you before? Well, I haven't been disturbed before. These, uh, uh, movies, whatever they are, <laughs> they have me completely unnerved. I shall have to do everything in my power to get them out. But they'll be leaving in about uh, ten days or so. Just be patient. They'll leave. Uh, uh, and besides, there's not much you can do about it. Uh, being a ghost. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you are a spunky one. <laughs> Logan always rises to the challenge. You are my kind of person, my dear. A formidable adversary. I like that. Well, there are things to attend to. You're... You're disappearing. Temporarily, my dear. Temporarily. Oh, oh good heavens. Oh. oh, I forgot all about you, Cora. Oh, what happened? Oh, I must have fainted. Oh... What was it? Uh, it was great grandfather Clayton. Oh, you, you spoke with it? Uh, him? I did. Uh, it was Clayton, Logan's ghost. Oh, and he's furious about that movie company being here. You mean there's a real live ghost in this house? Well, that's a strange way to describe a ghost, but yes, Cora, there is. <gasps> We can't stay here with the ghost. We most certainly will stay here. And not a word to the movie people. I'm afraid they're in for more trouble, but I don't want to lose them. We won't be shooting tomorrow, Miss Logan. We're setting up for some special effects. Oh, that sounds interesting. You know, I've never asked you just what this movie is about. Well, it's a horror film based on the book Dream House. It was a big bestseller last year. Oh, well, I never read those things, but I do remember ads for that in the paper. Mm, oh, it's a good story. About a young couple who buy an old house. Their dream house. And the house has a, well, a personality of its own. They plan some renovation, and the house actually helps them. <laughs> In what way? Well, they plan to add a window on one wall of the living room. They mark exactly where they'll install it, and the next day, there it is. Like magic, and other things like that. But where's the horror? Ah, well, that's the last part of the movie. After the couple get the house just the way they want it, they decide to sell it for a profit and move away. <laughs> well, the house doesn't like that. Oh, oh, I see. And gradually, the house makes them prisoners until the climax, when the house collapses into rubble with them trapped inside. Well, good heavens, you're not going to collapse our house. <laughs> no, no, of course not. We'll do that scene in the studio with special effects. 
Right now, we're setting up for a scene where the wife starts up the stairs, and suddenly, the stairs just level out, and she slides all the way to the bottom. The house is revenge, of course. Gracious. Well, the men install spring action risers on each step. Then, with a flip of the switch, they all pop up and turn the staircase into a slide. Now, it, it won't damage your stairs at all. But what happens to the poor actress? Well, she's well padded under her clothes, and besides, Myra's a trooper. She'll do anything. Well, I gotta run. See you tomorrow, Mrs. Logan. Yes. Goodbye. The tricks they can do in the movies. Yes. Oh, there you are, Cora. I was just looking for you. Where is he now? Oh, Mr. Blake just left. Oh, no, no, not him. The ghost. Great-grandfather. I have no idea. I haven't heard from him since yesterday. To think he's been here all the time, looking over our shoulders, as it were. He said he was sleeping. Well, I am not going to get any sleep with him prowling around this house and those people cluttering up the place downstairs. I'm going over and stay with Maud Wilkins till this is all over. I see they're all still here. Oh. Oh, I wish you wouldn't appear so suddenly. Oh, <gasps> perhaps you'd like me to knock. Well, you could give me some kind of a warning. You know, you've scared Cora away altogether. She's gone to stay with a friend. Well, I'm glad I'm affecting someone. You and that man in the beard are as thick as thieves. You pay no attention to my wishes. Great-grandfather Clayton, I told you before. I need the money this film is bringing me. And besides, I find it rather interesting. Well, I don't at all like that contraption they put on the stairs. Now, I built those stairs with my own two hands. And a little help from your grandfather. Nothing in the house is being harmed, except your rest. You can certainly do without a little of that for a while. You've already been sleeping for 110 years. Well, I see you are undeterred, Estelle. Now, in our first visit, I admitted I liked your spirit. But... From one spirit to another, I intend to get them out. Now, from what you told me of this movie-making, it's a play. <laughs> I know just how to go about it. I hope you don't mind my watching all the time, Mr. Blake. Oh, not at all, Miss Logan. Uh, we're shooting the staircase scene this morning. Well, I don't envy that poor actress sliding down the stairs. <laughs> As you said yesterday, she is a trooper. Uh, Rex... Rex, uh, we're ready when you are, but uh, they just can't seem to find Myra. The script girl's been all over the place looking for her. Well, could she have gone into the village? No, 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 not Myra. She never leaves the set during the call. She didn't say anything to anyone about going somewhere? No, no. She always checks with Madeline. Well, we can't shoot the scene without the leading lady. We'll just have to wait until she shows up. Uh, you say it's not like Myra to leave the set? Yeah, that's right, Miss Logan. Uh, she has the patience of a saint. She is always on call. And she did arrive this morning. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She rode in from the motel with Madeline and me. Mm, well, I do hope she turns up soon. Uh, excuse me, uh, I have something to do. <laughs> What have you done with Myra? Great-grandfather Clayton, I know you can hear me. Well, of course I can. I was just waiting. For what? You asked me not to startle you by appearing so suddenly. <laughs> I was giving you time to get ready. <sighs> You've done something with that actress, haven't you? She is perfectly comfortable and totally safe. Where is she? I, uh, <clears throat> I invited her to my quarters. Your quarters? Great-grandfather, if you've done something to harm that woman, we could be in terrible trouble. Oh, no, 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 I have not harmed her. She's a beautiful woman. I have simply relieved the play of its leading lady. And uh, they all now have to pack up and leave. Now, perhaps you'll be good enough to tell them that. Hmm? You have got to tell me where she is. Where are your quarters? Ah, I won't give that away. There are more secret stairs and hidden hallways in this house than you realize. <laughs> oh, she's sleeping peacefully in my quarters and will continue to do so until that crowd of marauders leaves. She's sleeping? Yeah. 
bewitched by my magnetism. <laughs> I was able to hypnotize that uh, <clears throat> lovely young thing and put her to sleep. And she'll continue to sleep till I choose to wake her. Please, great-grandfather Clayton, wake up that actress and release her. Not until I am satisfied that those people will pack up and go. Oh, you're being impossibly selfish. I told you I needed the money they're paying me to save the house. If I can't pay the taxes, Cora and I will be thrown out. <laughs> You'll not be thrown out of this house. It is impossible. It is not impossible. <laughs> I just think you'd want to help us. <laughs> Instead of hurting us, your own flesh and blood. Oh, ye gods. <laughs> not tears. I, I thought you were above that. Well, you're callous and you're unfeeling and you're incredibly stupid. <laughs> callous, perhaps, and even ruthless. That's how I amass my fortune. But certainly not stupid. Then why won't you see it my way? Uh, oh, well, oh, very well, my dear. You, yes, you do have a point. I foreclose enough mortgages in my time to know that it does happen. But never to a Logan. Then you'll release Myra. Yes, she'll return safe, sound, and enormously refreshed. And you won't do anything more to interfere with the picture. Well, what, what, what word of honor. Although I rather think I was helping you by trying to upset them. How? Well, <laughs> the more delays they run into, the longer it takes. The more money for you since they're paying you by the day, I do believe. Oh, great grandfather Clayton, I'm surprised at you. Well, I couldn't face that nice Mr. Blake knowing I was cheating him, and it would be cheating. Now, see, he doesn't know about me. I can pull a few tricks that will really surprise him. Well, much as I need the extra money it might bring, I, I, I no, no, I cannot be a party to such an arrangement. Eh, well, have it your way, my dear. Ah, I shall not interfere any longer. I'll put up with this band of uh, uh, gypsies for your sake. Myra, where have you been? Waiting to film the staircase scene. What is holding you up? You haven't been drinking this early. <laughs> what are you talking about? I've been waiting on the back porch. I've been out there since... Wait a minute. I do remember a slight buzzing in my head. I felt a little dizzy, but that's all I remember. Did... Did I go somewhere? Well, only you can tell us, sweetheart, but... <laughs> It doesn't matter. We're pulling out of this place. Oh, Miss Longdale, you're back. I wish I knew what was going on here. Yeah, well, so do I. Miss Logan, I'm sorry, but we're leaving. There are, are too many crazy things going on in this house. Oh, but, Mr. Blake... No, no, no we, I... we can't afford any more delays. I'll just have to find another place. And take my advice, Miss Logan. You get out yourself. You're living in a haunted house. No truer words were ever spoken. But then, all hauntings aren't gruesome. I rather think great-grandfather Clayton is a delightful, if rather crusty character. But he was wrong. Delays won't add to Estelle's income from the rental of the house. The delays, just as she feared, are driving the movie people out. And eventually, Estelle and Cora, too, when they can't pay their taxes. We'll learn what happens when I return shortly with Act Three. It would be fun to live in a haunted house, never knowing what to expect from the spectral inhabitant. The ghost of Estelle Logan's great-grandfather came up with some unexpected results from his capers. And now Estelle faces the loss of income, which would have saved her house. She has just been informed of the movie director's reason for leaving. You're living in a haunted house. I know. You know? Well, why didn't you tell us that when you rented us the place? I didn't know it then. You see... Miss Logan... Wait, please, wait. I, I, I don't want you to go on. I, I know where Miss Longdale has been for the past two hours. You do? I know you'll find this hard to believe, but the ghost of my great-grandfather hypnotized her and 
took her to his quarters. What? Your what took Myra where? To his quarters. He has been trying to drive you away from the house. He hates all this confusion. Uh, Miss Logan, I can't say it hasn't been fun, but we'll be gone tomorrow. I'll have a check for you for the days we've been here. But I want you to stay, really. Great-grandfather promised not to interfere anymore. That's very nice of him, but I think we'll just look for another place. Now, are you satisfied? They are determined to leave. I hope you enjoy the new owners when this house is sold for taxes. Now, now, just a minute, Estelle. Don't abandon hope so easily. They are packing up and leaving tomorrow. Well, I think we might persuade them to stay and finish their business. Well, I can't, and I don't see how you can. Oh, come, come, my dear. Another demonstration of your lack of faith in the power of the spirit world. You mean you'll talk to them? Well, I wouldn't go as far as that. But I have a notion I can pull a few tricks to keep them here. Oh, Mr. Blake. Uh, Hi, Miss Logan. I suppose your mind's made up. I'm sorry, Miss Logan. I can't work in this house anymore. Myra's on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I I had to send her back to the city. Oh, how horrible. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. If she believes you, she was kidnapped by a ghost. If she believes me... She had a blackout. Either way, it's disturbing, to say the least. Uh, hey, uh, Rex. Uh, Rex, we got a real problem. Well, what's the matter? Can't get the van open. Oh, come on, Eddie. Don't bother me with things like that. I got enough trouble with the picture. Well, I, I just thought you ought to know if you want us to clear out our gear today, you'd better send for another van. <sighs> a simple problem with a lock. It's the driver's problem, not mine. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. I'll come take a look. But I don't know what more I can do. Now what? Hmm? What's the matter? Oh, the, the, this front door doesn't open. What'd you do? Lock it behind you? No, no, I left it wide open when I came in. Well, it's never stuck before. Yeah, well, I'll go around and try it from the outside. Oh, the sooner I get away from this madhouse, the better. Uh, hey, Rex, you won't believe this, but the back door won't open either. Oh, dear. Th- th- then go through the window. Look, I may go through the window, but my camera and gear won't make it. Miss Logan, surely there's a way of opening the doors to your house. Well, there always has been. That's very reassuring. But right now, we seem to be completely locked in. Short of breaking down the doors, what do you suggest? I don't know. Oh, Eddie, Hmm? have the guys outside push the back door in. We'll pay you for the damage, Miss Logan. Okay, okay, but I have my doubts. I'm sorry to use such drastic measures, but we got to get out of here. The last couple of days have put me way behind schedule. Oh, oh! I'm so sorry that it's turned out this way. What's the matter with them? Grown men can't open a simple back door. Ain't no use, Rex. Nah, won't budge. <laughs> Why, they can't even break it in. This is ridiculous. Give me your wrench, the heavy one. Look, how are you going to open a door with a wrench, huh? Like this. It bounced, it bounced right off the window pane. Look at that, the glass isn't even cracked. I don't believe this. I do not believe this. We're prisoners in this house of horrors. What the, what the devil was that? I, it, 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 it came from the living room. I, holy jump. What is it? <gasps> the front door. Where is it? It's nothing but a blank wall. The door is... It's gone. Eddie, get on the phone. Get some help here fast. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, wait, wait a minute, Rex. We are looking at this thing all wrong. What do you mean? Hey, Miss Logan, your, uh, your, your great, great grandfather, I mean this, this ghost. Uh... Come on, Eddie. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, could he, uh, I mean, is it possible he's doing this? I believe he is. You see, you see, when I convinced him I needed the money that you were going to pay me, and I begged him to stop trying to drive you away... He said he'd get you to stay. You're saying seriously that the ghost of your great-great-grandfather is locking the doors and keeping windows from breaking and and making doors disappear? He built this house with his own two hands. I guess he can do anything he wants to. Rex, Rex, don't you see what a gold mine we've got? A house with a real live ghost. That's a funny way to put it. 
But maybe you're right. And he's doing what our special effects guys have been working on for weeks. Now, if we can get him to cooperate, there is no telling what effects we could get for the final scene when the house walls the couple in. How do you negotiate with a ghost? Hey, Miss Logan, will he help? I'll ask. So they were impressed, eh? Completely. How did you ever make the door disappear? <laughs> well, when I built this house, I installed a few trick walls. I told you there are passageways you've never dreamed of. Locking the doors, keeping the glass from breaking, well, it was purely supernatural. <laughs> well, everything's back to normal now. Will you help them with the effects? Uh, I don't have any other choice, considering the spot I've put you in. Eh, uh, now what exactly do they want me to do? Well, you'll have to ask them. Oh, no, 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 I draw the line of communication with these mortals. Now, you can be my, uh, my agent. Seeing that I have now been drawn into the theatrical profession. Rex? Well... We've stumbled into the house of the century. Yeah, we still don't know how much cooperation we're going to get. You know, maybe he won't do anything at all. I, I, I wonder if Miss Logan can persuade him to, to appear in the film. Oh, nobody's going to believe this. <laughs> <laughs> They'll just say it's more of Rex Blake's film wizardry. Mr. Blake, my great-grandfather has agreed to help. He wants to know what you want him to do. Oh, uh, well, uh, can we see him? I mean, does he materialize? He said he'd prefer not to communicate directly. Well, that's going to make things a little difficult. No, no, he's hearing what you're saying now. He always does. If, if you just say, rattle the shutters or, or make a window disappear, I'm sure he'd do it. His name is Clayton. Uh-huh. <clears throat> uh, Clayton? <laughs> Clayton, can you hear me? Uh, just for a little experiment, how about making the stairs turn into a slide? That's uh, the one effect we're working on. Well, that, that's better than Roy's contraption. Uh, at the end of the film, the whole house shakes as it starts closing the people in. Uh, uh, the doors and the windows all disappear. Uh, okay, okay, you can do it. My goodness! The whole family! Uh, thanks, uh, Clayton. We'll be back. I'm going to round up my cast and crew. It, it'll take a day or two, and we'll be back to start filming. And will this help you get back on schedule? Absolutely. We may even finish ahead of schedule. Oh, come on, Eddie. Yeah. Uh, see you, Miss Logan. Day after tomorrow. Goodbye. You're right, Eddie. This is the house of the century. <laughs> it'll make you a million dollars. You'll be rolling in dough for years. <laughs> it looks like it. Oh, the twenty-five hundred a day we're paying old lady Logan is the best investment I ever made. Ah, uh -huh, those scoundrels! I don't see what you're so upset about. They are going to make a fortune from this venture for years to come. They said it. And all you're getting is a paltry $2,500 a day? But that was their agreement. And they had the nerve to ask me to appear. Well, <laughs> I am going to appear all right, but not in their movie. Estelle, I was a hard bargainer in my day, and I dare say I haven't lost my touch. Bargain? Certainly. If they're going to make millions thanks to our house and my efforts, then you're going to share in it. For years to come. I want to talk to them. Have them here at 8 a.m. sharp tomorrow. Oh, it's more than I'd hoped for, having him appear. Hey, I was going to ask him if he'd play a part. No, I don't think that's what he had in mind. Indeed, I don't. Is that him? Yes. He'll materialize in a second. I have some things to take up with you, sir. A real, live ghost. I learned that you stand to reap quite a handsome profit from our efforts here. Well, 
Profits? Yes, that's business. Uh, that's excess profits, I call it. Zillions for years to come, if I heard correctly. Now, that's quite a return on your investment. Now, before agreeing to any assistance on my part, you will agree to a far better share of the profits for Miss Logan. Well, we can talk, sure. Estelle, buy yourself a good lawyer. Get the best deal you can. And when he tells me he is satisfied with the contract, I'll offer my fullest cooperation. I'll call Mr. Henley right away. Hey, wait a minute. I didn't say we were going to... Millions of dollars. Well, maybe we can deal. Well, my dear, I think you and Cora are well taken care of for the rest of your natural lives. Now, after I finish this business, I... I think I'll go on over. I've earned it. Go over? Yes, to the other side. To the spirit world. It's becoming increasingly grim for our spirits to hang on with living human beings. The whole world is going crazy. You know something, Clayton? I'm going to miss you. Places, everyone. Oh, Mr. Logan... <laughs> Clayton, sir, are you ready for the final destruction scene? Uh, if I must. Okay. Myra, on the stairs. Roll them, Eddie. Action! place were guaranteed a good many more years of existence. It was great-grandfather Logan's help that saved them, and of course the great stroke of luck that brought the movie people to the house in the first place. I'll have another thought on ghosts in the house when I return shortly. Who invited Susan to lunch? Little did he know that she was a victim of Raven House paperback mysteries. <laughs> I finally knew Albert was deathly allergic to bee stings. Uh-huh. But I was still surprised to find out that he planted the killer wasp in Albert's car. Well, I don't understand. Why were you so surprised? Well, I thought it was an accident. Oh. So I told the police. Well, wait a minute. You what? I told the police. You told the, the police? Why'd you do that? Well, I had to report the accident. Report an accident? In a book? <laughs> Ravenhouse publishes new mysteries every month. Which one will claim you as its victim? If you're clever enough, you'll find Ravenhouse mysteries wherever paperbacks are sold. So the cantankerous ghost turned out to be not so cantankerous after all. That's the way with a lot of humans, I know. Give them a challenge, ask their best, and they usually rise to the occasion and lose their petty self-indulgence. If you have to deal with a difficult person, try it sometime. Ask their advice and help, sincerely, and you'll get sincerity in return. Our cast included Marion Seldes, E.B. Juster, Lloyd Batista, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by Raven House Paperback Mysteries. This is Tammy Grimes, inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. It's fun. It's enjoyable. It's a family affair, and it's called... It's magic. It's magic opens at the Palace Theater February 9th through February 14th. And will be hosted by popular television star Bob Ron. No matter what your age, from 5 to 105, it's probably the most enjoyable family show you'll see in 1982. Magic and illusions performed by magicians from all over the world. Tickets are on sale right now at the Palace Theater box office or call the Palace Theater box office at 469-0017 and charge your tickets on Visa or MasterCard. It's Magic opens February 9th through February 14th with matinees on Saturday and Sunday and all proceeds from opening night will go to benefit Children's Hospital. 
It's magic. Magic and illusions from all over the world coming to the palace February 9th through February 14th. It's a family affair. World's greatest illusionists include Shimada, Crimean, Diana, Dick Zimmerman, and Patrick and Maya. The music of your life is on 1230 WCOL in Columbus, 25 degrees downtown. It's 11 o'clock. CBS News, a hostage siege at a Memphis hospital is over. The gunman dead, shot by police. Three hostages are safe. I'm David Jackson reporting on the CBS radio network. Jean-Claude Goulet, a 40-year-old welder from Louisiana, took the hostages yesterday at St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital, where his son died of leukemia. Ever since yesterday afternoon, he'd kept police at bay with a handgun. The captives, his son's doctor and nurse, and a hospital psychologist. Just a bit over an hour ago, it all ended. We get the story from Dave Gilton of Memphis affiliate WREC. The Memphis Police Department Tactical Unit has been patient for the last two days.